practical techniques and mental healings. An engineer has a technique and a process for building a bridge or an engine. Like the engineer, your mind also has a technique for governing, controlling, and directing your life. You must realize that methods and techniques are primary. In building the Golden Gate Bridge, the chief engineer understood mathematical principles, stresses and strains. Secondly, he had a picture of the ideal bridge across the bay. The third step was his application of tried and proven methods by which the principles were implemented until the bridge took form and we drive on it. There also are techniques and methods by which your prayers are answered. If your prayer is answered, there is a way in which it is answered, aunt. This is a scientific way. Nothing happens by chance. This is a world of law and order. In this chapter you will find practical techniques for the unfolding and nurture of your spiritual life. Your prayers must not remain up in the air like a balloon. They must go somewhere and accomplish something in your life. When we come to analyze prayer we discover there are many different approaches and methods. We will not consider in this book the formal ritual prayers used in religious services. These have important place in group worship. We are immediately concerned with the methods of personal prayer as it is applied in your daily life and as it is used to help others. Prayer is the formulation of an idea concerning something we wish to accomplish. Prayer is the soul's sincere desire. Your desire is here. Prayer. It comes out of your deepest needs and it reveals the things you want in life. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. That is really prayer, life's 72. Hunger and thirst for peace, harmony, health, joy, and all the other blessings of life. The passing over technique for impregnating the subconscious. This consists essentially in inducing the subconscious mind to take over your request as handed it by the conscious mind. This passing over is best accomplished in the reverie-like state. Know that in your deeper mind are infinite intelligence and infinite power. Just calmly think over what you want. See it coming into fuller fruition from this moment forward. Be like the little girl who had a very bad cough and a sore throat. She declared firmly and repeatedly, it is passing away. Now, it is passing away now. It passed away in about an hour. Use this technique with complete simplicity and naivete. Your subconscious will accept your blueprint. If you were building a new home for yourself and family, you know that you would be intensely interested in regard to the blueprint for your home. You would see to it that the builders conform to the blueprint. You would watch the material and select only the best wood, steel, in fact, the best of everything. What about your mental home and your mental blueprint for happiness and abundance? All your experiences and everything that enters into your life depend upon the nature of the mental building blocks which you use in the construction of your mental home. If your blueprint is full of mental patterns of fear, worry, anxiety, or lack, and if you are despondent, doubtful, and cynical, then the texture of the mental material you are weaving into your mind will come forth as more toil, care, tension, anxiety, and limitation of all kinds. The most fundamental and the most far-reaching activity in life is that which you build into your mentality every waking hour. Your word is silent and invisible, nevertheless, it is real. You are building your mental home all the time, and your thought and mental imagery represent your blueprint. Hour by hour, moment. 73. By moment, you can build radiant health, success, and happiness by the thoughts you think, the ideas which you harbor, the beliefs that you accept, and the scenes that you rehearse in the hidden studio of your mind. This stately mansion, upon the construction of which you are perpetually engaged, is your personality, your identity, and this plane, your whole life story on this earth. Get a new blueprint, built silently by realizing peace, harmony, joy, and goodwill in the present moment. By dwelling upon these 
things and claiming them, your subconscious will accept your blueprint and bring all these things to pass. By their fruits ye shall know them. The science and art of true prayer. The term science means knowledge, which is coordinated, arranged, and systematized. Let us think of the science and art of true prayer as it deals with the fundamental principles of life and the techniques and processes by which they can be demonstrated in your life, as well as in the life of every human being when he applies them faithfully. The art is your technique or process, and the science behind. It is the definite response of creative mind to your mental picture or thought. Ask, and it shall be given you, seek, and ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Matthew 7-7 Here you are told you shall receive that for which you ask. It shall be opened to you when you knock, and you shall find that for which you are searching. This teaching implies the definiteness of mental and spiritual laws. There is always a direct response from the infinite intelligence of your subconscious mind to your conscious thinking. If you ask for bread, you will not receive a stone. You must ask. Believing, if you are to receive, your mind moves from the thought to the thing. Unless there is first an image in the mind, it cannot move. For there would be nothing for it to move toward. Your prayer, which is your mental act must be accepted as an image in your mind before the power from your subconscious will. 74. Play upon it and make it productive. You must reach a point of acceptance in your mind, an unqualified and undisputed state of agreement. This contemplation should be accompanied by a feeling of joy and restfulness in foreseeing the certain accomplishment of your desire. The sound basis for the art and science of true prayer is your knowledge and complete confidence that the movement of your conscious mind will gain a definite response from your subconscious mind, which is one with boundless wisdom and infinite power. By following this procedure, your prayers will be answered. The Visualization Technique The easiest and most obvious way to formulate an idea is to visualize it, to see it in your mind's eye as vividly as if it were alive. You can see with the naked eye only what already exists in the external world, in a similar way, that which you can visualize in your mind's eye already exists in the invisible realms of your mind. Any picture, which you have in your mind, is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What you form in your imagination is as real as any part of your body. The idea and the thought are real and will one day appear in your objective world if you are faithful to your mental image. This process of thinking forms impressions in your mind, these impressions in turn become manifested as facts and experiences in your life. The builder visualizes the type of building he wants, he sees it as he desires it to be completed. His imagery and thought processes become a plastic mold from which the building will emerge, a beautiful or an ugly one, a skyscraper or a very low one, is mental. Imagery is projected as it is drawn on paper. Eventually, the contractor and his workers gather the essential materials, and the building progresses until it stands finished, conforming perfectly to the mental patterns of the architect. 75. I use the visualization technique prior to speaking from the platform. I quiet the wheels of my mind in order that I may present to the subconscious mind my images of thought. Then, I picture the entire auditorium in the seats filled with men and women, and each one of them illumined and inspired by the infinite healing presence. Within each one, I see them as radiant, happy, and free. Having first built up the idea in my imagination, I quietly sustain it. There as a mental picture while I imagine I hear men and women saying, I am healed, I feel wonderful, I've had an instantaneous healing, I'm transformed. I keep this up for about 10 minutes or more, knowing and feeling that each person's mind and body are saturated with love, wholeness, beauty, and perfection. My awareness grows to the point where in my mind I can actually hear the voices of the multitude proclaiming their health and happiness, then I release the whole picture and go on to the platform. 
almost every Sunday. Some people stop and say that their prayers were answered. Mental Movie Method The Chinese say, a picture is worth a thousand words. William James, the father of American psychology, stressed the fact that the subconscious mind will bring to pass any picture held in the mind and back by faith. Act as though I am, and I will be. A number of years ago I was in the Middle West lecturing in several states, and I desired to have a permanent location in the general area from which I could serve those who desired help. I traveled far, but the desire did not leave my mind. One evening, while in a hotel in Spokane, Washington, I relaxed completely on a couch, immobilized my attention, and in a quiet, passive manner imagined that I was talking to a large audience, saying in effect, I am glad to be here, I who have prayed for the ideal opportunity. I saw in my mind's eye the imaginary audience, and they felt the reality of it all. I played the role of the actor, dramatized this mental movie, and felt satisfied that this picture was being conveyed to my subconscious mind, which would bring it to pass in its own way. The next morning, on awakening, I felt 76. A great sense of peace and satisfaction, and in a few days' time on, received a telegram asking me to take over an organization in the Midwest, which I did, and I enjoyed it immensely for several years. The method outlined here appeals to many who have described it as the mental movie method. I have received numerous letters from people who listen to my radio talks and weekly public lectures, telling me of the wonderful results they get using this technique in the sell of their property. I suggest to those who have homes or property for sale that they satisfy themselves in their own mind that their price is right. Then, I claim that the infinite intelligence is attracting to them the buyer who really wants to have the property and who will love it and prosper in it. After having done this I suggest that they quiet their mind, relax, let go, and get into a drowsy, sleepy state, which reduces all mental effort to a minimum. Then, they are to picture the check in. Their hands will rejoice in the check, give thanks for the check, and go off to sleep feeling the naturalness of the whole mental movie created in their own mind. They must act as though it were an objective reality. And the subconscious mind will take it as an impression, and through the deep recurrence of the mind the buyer and the seller are brought together. A mental picture held in the mind, backed by faith, will come to pass. The Baudouin Technique Charles Baudouin was a professor at the Rousseau Institute in France. He was a brilliant psychotherapist and the research director of the new Nancy School of Healing, who in 1910 thought that the best way to impress the subconscious mind was to enter into a drowsy, sleepy state, or a state akin to sleep in which all effort was reduced to a minimum. Then in a quiet, passive, receptive way, by reflection, he would convey the idea to the subconscious. The following is his formula, a very simple way of securing this. Impregnation of the subconscious mind is to condense the idea, which is to be the object of suggestion, to sum it up in a brief phrase. 77. Which can be readily graven on the memory, and to repeat it over and over again as a lullaby. Some years ago, a young lady in Los Angeles was engaged in a long bitter family lawsuit over a will. Her husband had bequeathed his entire estate to her, and his sons and daughters by the previous marriage were bitterly fighting to break the will. The Baudouin technique was outlined to her, and this is what she did. She relaxed her body in an armchair, entered into the sleepy state and, as suggested, condensed the idea of her need into a phrase consisting of Six words easily graven on the memory. It is finished in divine order. The significance to her of these words meant that infinite intelligence operating through the laws of her subconscious mind would bring about a harmonious adjustment through the principle of harmony. She continued this procedure every night for about ten nights. After she got into a sleepy state, she would affirm slowly quietly and feelingly the statement, it is finished in divine order. 
over and over again, feeling a sense of inner peace on an all-pervading tranquility, then she went off into her deep, normal sleep. On the morning of the 11th day, following the use of the above technique, she awakened with the sense of well-being, a conviction that it was finished. Her attorney called her the same day, saying that the opposing attorney and his clients were willing to settle. A harmonious agreement was reached, and litigation was discontinued. The Sleeping Technique By entering into a sleepy, drowsy state, effort is reduced to a minimum. The conscious mind is submerged to a great extent when in a sleepy state. The reason for this is that the highest degree of outcropping of the subconscious occurs prior to sleep and just after we awaken. In this state the negative thoughts, which tend to neutralize your desire and so prevent acceptance by your subconscious mind, are no longer present. Suppose you want to get rid of a destructive habit. Assume a comfortable posture, relax your body, and be still. Get into a sleepy 78 state, and in that sleepy state, say quietly, over and over again as a lullaby, I am completely free from this habit, harmony and peace of mind reign supreme. Repeat the above slowly, quietly, and lovingly, for 5 or 10 minutes night and morning. Each time you repeat the words the emotional value becomes greater. When the urge comes to repeat the negative habit, repeat the above formula out loud by yourself. By this means you induce the subconscious to accept the idea, and the healing follows. The Thank You Technique In the Bible, Paul recommends that we make known our requests with praise and thanksgiving. Some extraordinary results follow this simple method of prayer. The thankful heart is always close to the creative forces of the universe, causing countless blessings to flow toward it by the law of reciprocal relationship, based on a cosmic law of action and reaction. For instance, a father promises his son a car for graduation, the boy has not yet received the car, but he is very thankful and happy, and is as joyous as though he had actually received the car. He knows his father will fulfill his promise, and he is full of gratitude and joy even though he has not yet received the car, objectively speaking. He has, however, received it with joy and thankfulness in his mind. I shall illustrate how Mr. Broke applied this technique with excellent results. He said, bills are piling up, I am out of work, I have three children and no money. What shall I do? Regularly every night and morning, for a period of about three weeks, he repeated the words. Thank you, Father, for my wealth, in a relaxed, peaceful manner. Until the feeling of mood of thankfulness dominated his mind. He Imagine he was addressing the infinite power and intelligence within him knowing, of course, that he could not see the creative intelligence or infinite mind. He was seeing with the inner eye of spiritual perception, realizing that his thought image of wealth was the first cause, relative to the money, position, and food he needed. His thought feeling was the substance of wealth untrammeled by 79 antecedent conditions of any kind. By repeating, thank you, Father. Over and over again, his mind and heart were lifted up to the point of acceptance, and when fear, thoughts of lack, poverty, and distress came into his mind, he would say, thank you, Father, as often as necessary. He knew that as he kept up the thankful attitude he would recondition his mind to the idea of wealth, which is what happened. The sequel to his prayer is very interesting. After praying in the above mentioned manner, he met a former employer of his on the street whom he had not seen for 20 years. The man offered him a very lucrative position and advanced him $500 on a temporary loan. Today, Mr. Broke is vice president of the company for which he works. His recent remark to me was, I shall never forget the wonders of thank you, Father. It has worked wonders for me. The Affirmative Method The effectiveness of an affirmation is determined largely by your understanding of the truth and the meaning back of the words, cubed in. Praying use not vain repetition. 
Therefore, the power of your affirmation lies in the intelligent application of definite and specific positives. For example, a boy adds three and three and puts down seven on the blackboard. The teacher affirms with mathematical certainty that three and three are six, therefore, the boy changes his figures accordingly. The teacher's statement did not make three and three equals six because the latter was already a mathematical truth. The mathematical truth caused the boy to rearrange the figures on the blackboard. It is abnormal to be sick, it is normal to be healthy. Health is the truth of your being. When you affirm health, harmony, and peace for yourself or another, and when you realize these are universal principles of your own being, you will rearrange the negative pattern of your subconscious mind based on your faith and understanding of that which you affirm. The result of the affirmative process of prayer depends on your conforming to the principles of life, regardless of appearances. 80. Consider for a moment that there is a principle of mathematics and none of error. There is a principle of truth but none of dishonesty. There is a principle of intelligence but none of ignorance. There is a principle of harmony and none of discord. There is a principle of health but none of disease, and there is a principle of abundance but none of poverty. The affirmative method was chosen by the author for use on his sister who was to be operated on for the removal of gallstones in a hospital in England. The condition described was based on the diagnosis of hospital tests and the usual x-ray procedures. He asked me to pray for her. We were separated geographically about 6,500 miles, but there is no time or space and divine principle. Infinite mind or intelligence is present in its entirety at every point simultaneously. I withdrew all thought from the contemplation of symptoms and from the corporeal personality altogether. I affirmed as follows, this prayer is for my sister Catherine. She is relaxed and at peace, poised balanced, serene, and calm. The healing intelligence of her subconscious mind, which created her body, is now transforming every cell, nerve, tissue, muscle, and bone of her being according to the perfect pattern of all organs lodged in her subconscious mind. Silently, quietly, all distorted thought patterns in her subconscious mind are removed and dissolved, and the vitality, wholeness, and beauty of the Life principle are made manifest in every atom of her being. She is now open and receptive to the healing currents, which are flowing through her like a river, restoring her to perfect health, harmony, and peace. All distortions and ugly images are now washed away by the infinite ocean of love and peace flowing through her, and it is so. I affirm the above several times a day, and at the end of two weeks my sister had an examination, which showed a remarkable healing, and the x-ray proved negative. To affirm is to state that it is so, and as you maintain this attitude of mind as true, regardless of all evidence to the contrary, you will receive an answer to your prayer. Your thought can only affirm, for 81. Even if you deny something, you are actually affirming the presence of what you deny. Repeating an affirmation, knowing what you are saying and why you are saying it, leads the mind to that state of consciousness where it accepts that which you state as true. Keep on affirming the truths of life until you get the subconscious reaction, which satisfies the argumentative method. This method is just what the word implies. It stems from the procedure of Dr. Phineas Parkhurst Quimby of Maine. Dr. Quimby, A. Pioneer in mental and spiritual healing, lived and practiced in Belfast, Maine, about 100 years ago. A book called the Quimby Manuscripts, published in 1921 by Thomas C. Crowell Company, New York City, and edited by Horatio Dresser, is available in your library. This book gives newspaper accounts of this man's remarkable results in prayer treatment of the sick. Quimby duplicated many of the healing miracles recorded in the Bible. In brief, the argumentative method employed according to Quimby consists of spiritual reasoning where you convince the patient 
and yourself that his sickness is due to his false belief, groundless fears, and negative patterns lodged in his subconscious mind. You reason it out clearly in your mind and convince your patient that the disease or ailment is due only to a distorted, twisted pattern of thought, which has taken form in his body. This wrong belief in some external power and external causes has now externalized itself as sickness, and can be changed by changing the thought patterns. You explain to the sick person that the basis of all healing is a change of belief. You also point out that the subconscious mind created the body and all its organs, therefore, it knows how to heal it, can heal it, and is doing so now as you speak. You argue in the courtroom of your mind that the disease is a shadow of the mind based on disease-soaked, morbid thought imagery. You continue to build up all the evidence you can muster on behalf of the healing power within, which created all the organs in the first 82 place, and which has a perfect pattern of every cell, nerve, and tissue within it. Then, you render a verdict in the courthouse of your mind in favor of yourself or your patient. You liberate the sick one by faith and spiritual understanding. Your mental and spiritual evidence is overwhelming, there being but one mind, what you feel is true will be resurrected in the experience of the patient. This procedure is essentially the argumentative method used by Dr. Quimby of Maine. From 1849 to 1869, the absolute method is like modern sound wave therapy. Many people throughout the world practice this form of prayer treatment with wonderful results. The person using the absolute method mentions the name of the patient, such as John Jones, then quietly and silently thinks of God and his qualities and attributes, such as, God is all bliss, boundless love, infinite intelligence, all-powerful, boundless wisdom, absolute harmony, indescribable beauty, and perfection. As he quietly thinks along these lines he is lifted up in consciousness into a new spiritual wavelength, at which times he feels the infinite ocean of God's love is now dissolving everything. Unlike itself in the mind and body of John Jones for whom he is praying, he feels all the power and love of God are now focused on John Jones, and whatever is bothering or vexing him is now completely neutralized in the presence of the infinite ocean of life and love. The absolute method of prayer might be likened to the sound wave or sonic therapy recently shown me by a distant dish physician in Los Angeles. He has an ultrasound wave machine, which oscillates at a tremendous speed and sends sound waves to any area of the body to which it is directed. These sound waves can be controlled, and he told me of achieving remarkable results in dissolving arthritic calcareous deposits, as well as the healing and removal of other disturbing conditions. To the degree that we rise in consciousness by contemplating qualities and attributes of God, do we generate spiritual electronic 83 waves of harmony, health, and peace. Many remarkable healings follow this technique of prayer. A cripple walks. Dr. Phineas Parkhurst Quimby, of whom we spoke previously in this chapter, used the absolute method in the latter years of his healing career. He was really the father of psychosomatic medicine and the first psychoanalyst. He had the capacity to diagnose clairvoyantly the cause of the patient's trouble, pains, and aches. The following is a condensed account of the healing of a cripple as recorded in Quimby's manuscripts. Quimby was called on to visit a woman who was lame, aged, aunt, bedridden. He states that her ailment was due to the fact that she was imprisoned by a creed so small and contracted that she could not stand upright and move about. She was living in the tomb of fear and ignorance, furthermore, she was taking the Bible literally, and it frightened her. In this tomb, Quimby said, was the presence and power of God trying to burst the bands, break through the bonds, and rise from the dead. When she would ask others for an explanation of some passage of the Bible, the answer would be a stone, then she would hunger for the bread of life. Dr. Quimby diagnosed her case as 
a mind Claudian stagnated, due to excitation and fear, caused by the inability to see clearly the meaning of the passage of the Bible, which she had been reading. This showed itself in the body by her heavy and sluggish feeling, which would terminate as paralysis. At this point Quimby asked her what was meant in the Bible verses. Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come. John 7 colon 33 34. She replied that it meant Jesus went to heaven. When he explained what it really meant by telling her that being with her a little while meant his explanation of her symptoms, feelings, on 84. Their causes, that is, he had compassion and sympathy for her. Momentarily, but he could not remain in that mental state. The next step was to go to him that sent us, which, as Quimby pointed out, was the creative power of God in all of us. Quimby immediately traveled in his mind and contemplated the divine ideal, that is, the vitality, intelligence, harmony, and power of God functioning in the sick person. This is why he said to the woman, Therefore, where I go you cannot come, for you are in your narrow, restricted belief, and I am in health. This prayer and explanation produced an instantaneous sensation, and a change came over her mind. She walked without her crutches. When he said it was one of the most singular of all his healings, she was, as it were, dead to error. And to bring her to life or truth was to raise her from the dead. Quimby quoted the resurrection of Christ and applied it to her own Christ talk. Health, this produced a powerful effect on her. He also explained to her that the truth, which she accepted, was the angel or idea, which rolled away the stone of fear, ignorance, and superstition, thereby releasing the healing power of God, which made her whole. The decree method power goes into our word according to the feeling and faith behind it. When we realize the power that moves the world is moving on our behalf and is backing up our word, our confidence and assurance. Bro, you do not try and add power to power, therefore, there must be no mental striving, coercion, force, or mental wrestling. A young girl used the decree method on a young man who was constantly phoning her, pressing her for dates, and meeting her of business, she found it very difficult to get rid of him. She decreed as follows, I release dot 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 unto God. He is in his true place. At all times, I am free, and he is free. I now decree that my words go forth into infinite mind and it brings it to pass. It is so. She said he vanished and she has never seen him since, adding, it was as though the ground swallowed him up. 85. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, aunt. The light shall shine upon thy ways. John 22 28. Serve yourself with scientific truth. 1. Be a mental engineer and use tried and proven techniques in building a grander and greater life. 2. Your desire is your prayer. Picture the fulfillment of your desire. Now and feel its reality, and you will experience the joy of the answered prayer. 3. Desire to accomplish things the easy way, with the sure aid of mental science. 4. You can build radiant health, success, and happiness by the thoughts you think in the hidden studio of your mind. 5. Experiment scientifically until you personally prove that there is always a direct response from the infinite intelligence of your subconscious mind to your conscious thinking. 6. Feel the joy and restfulness in foreseeing the certain accomplishment of your desire. Any mental picture, which you have in your mind, is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. 7. A mental picture is worth a thousand words. Your subconscious will bring to pass any picture held in the mind back by faith. 8. Avoid all effort or mental coercion in prayer. Get into a sleepy drowsy state and lull yourself to sleep feeling and knowing that near prayer is answered. 9. Remember that the thankful heart is always close to the riches of the universe. 10. To affirm is to state that it is so, 
and as you maintain this attitude of mind is true, regardless of all evidence to the contrary, you will receive an answer to your prayer. 86. 11. Generate electricity.